Hi all, it's V. It's Steve. And today we have spent the morning at the National Museum of Computing here at Bletchley Park. And Steve's the computer guy, so I thought, eh, I don't know about this place. It was really interesting. It was fascinating, and the people who work or volunteer here are so knowledgeable. They know everything about their machines. Really, really good. And they don't just build replicas. They've had people build replicas that work. Um, they actually can still decipher. Yeah, it goes through the code breaking. We haven't been yeah. to Bletchley yet, we're going to go tomorrow. No. Um, we're going to kind of a whole lead up to... Sorry, sons of demise. To the, to the development of a code breaking. It uh, starts really, really with interesting. the war and the code breaking and how computers got their start. And then it goes into personal computers. Yeah. And computers that were huge and you forget, if you're our age, what they were like back in the day. Um, up to games the first gaming computers and there's a pinball machine oh, i love pinball i haven't played pinball in decades yeah. and i'm still not very good at it but hey i played that's what counts yeah, so yeah that. it was a fascinating place so let us take you through it show you what we saw thank you as always for joining us like subscribe you know all those things thanks yep bye, bye. This is a replica of the bomb that they took years to put together. And it is the only working bomb in the world. It still works. And the demonstration said they get school children to write ciphers. And so far, this machine has figured all of them out. So it's that, the Heath Robinson machine. Yeah. And then we've got... When you look to the right, you can count up to two like I can and see there's two tapes there. But if the machine's on, only this near one will be actually rotated. It is an intercept from all time and about 6,000 characters. So each click is 6,000 calculations. Okay, so it's 6,000 steps, 6,000 steps. And that's the thing. Now it's going at that speed, five times faster than the other. That's useful. And the people that were operating, 
Would you pretty much the general principle of that far? Um, it's able to apply what's an open to meet and aid basis. But in practice, what would you still be able to get in this more uncertainty? Yeah. Quite how far that goes about the answer if you take the time to do it. It doesn't mean you know the language of it. Yes. If you've got the first ever computer, Colossus. Limited in its instruction set, it was only really built to prove that the memory technology yeah. worked. So they took it apart and then they built the Manchester Mark 1. 1951 and it still works. This is not a replica. No. Yeah, so it was built at the Atomic Energy Research Establishment at Harwell near Oxford, where they used it to design nuclear reactors. Early nuclear reactors. Steve had one of these at school. That's how old he is. <laughs> Don't admit that. Say what they are? Oh my gosh, I do remember these old apples. I mean, I don't remember these. They're way before my time. <clears throat> way before my time. Oh my goodness. Like, this is like... new compared to the stuff I used in uh, even so these are the first personal computers good grief they're so big that is a laptop you could carry it with you that is huge these are all laptops oh yeah oh there's a fairly normal size they're all portable, you could take them with you. Wow. Oh, and now things that look a bit more handheld. <laughs> iPod mini. So they have an area where you can sit and play. Oh, and look, there's Pac-Man. I know this doesn't come through very well because it doesn't film. And the Simpsons game. There is so much information here. So this is all about air travel. Pinball. Does anyone play pinball anymore? I miss pinball. It was awesome. <laughs>